This morning's project on the KLR650 is we're going to take apart the rear suspension here, the rocker and the uh, linkage assembly, possibly pull the shock out. What I want to see is to make sure all of this stuff is greased. I've had bad experiences with Kawasaki's coming from the factory with no grease in the bearings. This was back on the KDX 200s. They would have just a little bit of light lubricating oil. So you take your brand new bike, you ride it for a while, and then find out that your bearings were completely shot in everything in the rear suspension. So, since I haven't had this part, I want to give it a check. First thing we got to do, start taking bolts out. These uh, in the uh, linkage need like a 22 or a, what I end up finding, 22 millimeter or 7 8 fits on this side and a 17 over here. I already went and loosened them up, so we'll just pull them out and see what they look like. This should give a good indication of how the rest of them are. Like I said, I just don't trust Kawasaki. Now I don't trust anybody. Until I've been in there and seen it for myself. Plus, I'd kind of like to see if the uh, shock has got a different spring on it. Because they went and put gold valves and different springs in the forks. I wanted to see if they did anything different to the shock. So you can see I've got this up on the center stand. Got a couple of blocks of wood under the wheel just to raise it up enough to take the pressure off the bolts and the linkages start falling out. Let's see if I can put it there. Stand out of the way. That bolt came out. Put the stand back down. Pull this bolt out. That takes your linkages. If you want to lower or heighten your suspension, you can differ lengths of these. And those are sleeves. We got to push the sleeve out. Oh, this looks good. Sorry, shining right in your eyes. I'll shine my eyes. Hey, it looks good and greasy. And what I'll do is just clean all these parts up, put them back in with some fresh grease on it, call it good. That's a nice surprise. I don't know if it came from Kawasaki that way or somebody's been in here and already worked on it, but at least they're not a rusty, torn up mess. All right, I'll get some tools. Should be able to undo this bolt Flip the rocker forward, and that should let the shock drop out, I think. Take the top mount out. So, I'll be back. Swing on bearings feel pretty good. They're not dragging, so at the moment, I'm not going to pull those out. Do need to knock this pin out here. I say that thing shouldn't have been under any pressure, but it was not wanting to come out. Just a really tight fit in there. Okay. Rocker seems to move okay. This bearing here, the shock. Still greasy and moves. So now, to drop the shock out. All I gotta do is find the upper mount. Upper shock mount is on this side, right behind this hose. I'm gonna have to loosen the hose clamp. 
slide the crankcase vent down out of the way, we should be able to get to the top bolt. Take it right out, shock should drop out. Okay, shock bolt is a 17. Just need to loosen it. Just knock my light over. It appears to be coming out, so there must be a capture nut or it's threaded into the frame on the other side. So I'll pull it out and see if we can drop the shock out. Well, it was just that easy. Where's it at? There. Oh, yeah. There. Pull the bolt out and be hanging on to the shock because it just falls right out the bottom of the hole with no uh, external nitrogen tank or anything. There's nothing in the way. So very easy to change the shock on these. If you want to put a better shock, better spring, rebuild it, whatever you want to do, easy to take out. You have the shock on the bench here. Checked the uh, pressure in it. I had like 80, 90 pounds. Supposed to have 140, so it still had some pressure in it. What we're gonna do is take the nasty oil out of it. I bled the pressure. And it's got, it's not real good looking oil. <laughs> so, I'll throw it in the vise, get this spring off. I just got off the internet. I still don't know if that's an aftermarket spring or not. I'm gonna check its length when I get it off there. I kind of figured that they may have been into it because there's supposed to be a rubber cap over that stem and there was not. So, and as much work as they did on the front of the bike, I figured they might have changed the spring, but I don't know. If in doubt, I may order another Top Gun or Ibox spring or something to go on it. All right, I got started on this, drain the oil out, or started to drain the oil out, so I've got to complete it. We to take the coil spring off, and the spring compressor I normally use is one off a car. Now, I know I've used it on bikes before, but it will not fit in the coils on this. There's just not enough room between the coil and the shock body to get it in there. So, we headed off to the other garage where we got the press. Now, just use a bearing separator plate, put a little bit of pressure on it to get the spring moving down, then squeeze the separator plate so it's got a good bite on the spring. So now we should be able to push that down enough to get the spacer out there without launching this shock into the front of my car. Okay, need a hammer. So I was gonna need both hands. fingers out of harm's way. Now, I think the uh, bump stops just stuck to it. Yeah, that's the problem. There we go. Bump stop moved up. Fingers out of the way. Spacer comes right out. Gently let off the pressure. Spring is grown enough that I can't get it out of the press. There we go. No problem. Spring comes right off. 
All right, we'll head back over to the other shop where it's warm. I am still working on this shock here. Got the spring off of it a while ago, and as near as I can tell, that is a stock spring. Measures about 10 inches long, so probably stock. Everybody says change them. I actually thought it worked fine. I actually thought somebody had probably already changed it. Because when I was riding down gravel roads and hit washboards and stuff, it was kind of bouncing me around. So I actually took it to the lowest setting of preload and turned the uh, rebound damping up a notch and liked it much better. Now, I did jump the bike one time and it kind of bottomed out, but this bike was really not meant to fly. So, unless I end up with problems loading the bike down later, which I very well may with camping gear and everything. I'm going to leave it on there for now. Just change the oil, clean everything up, put it back together. There are excellent videos on Rocky Mountain on how to rebuild the shock, how to change the oil. One thing I had never seen before is how to work on this preload adjuster. If you take the snap ring off, the snap ring, and sorry about my dirty hands, but that's how they always are. And this little bolt, out uh, that hole then this whole assembly will slide off the top and there are some seals and stuff in the bottom that you just stack back up try to keep it clean now inside here see down in there got some gears clean this really well because there was little chunks of gravel and everything else inside there I'd noticed when I'd adjusted it before, it was a little chunky feeling. Well, there was a good reason for that. Now, this thing, you cannot completely take it apart easily because the case is crimped. So the innards are in there to stay unless you want to uncrimp it. This little uh, adjuster gear, you can take that clip off there and you can get the gear out. But I do not recommend it because it doesn't come out real easy because it's a beveled gear. And then it really doesn't go back in easy. I know for a fact that it doesn't go back in easy. So it really doesn't help you. So I just leave it alone. But soak it in some solvent. Blow it out with air. Carb cleaner. Whatever you got to do. And lube it up nice. Put it back on there. It should work much better and last a lot longer. But I had never seen anybody pull one of these off completely. I'm sure there's a video out there. But I hadn't found it yet. But I said I'm going to put it back together with stock shock. Or the stock spring until I have a reason not to. And then it'll be a decision on whether I want to upgrade the whole thing or just the spring. Apparently, shock doesn't really have enough rebound to handle a heavier spring, even though people do it. So, I don't know. I really like this bike, so it'll depend on how much money I want to spend. Okay, the way this assembly is stacked up is you have a nylon spacer to let everything kind of slide when you're adjusting it. You have a metal spacer and then you have an O-ring that fits in the groove on that metal spacer. Put that down in there. Then you have this, which is the uh, spring seat. It all fits down there like that, lets it slide, kind of seals it up. So, now, when you're working on this, see this hole right here? That goes right down in top of that gear assembly. So, that's where you want to lube it. Hose that out occasionally. Spray it full of spray lube. Let it soak everything up. Just got done putting 140 milliliters of oil into the shock with my little syringe there. And then we took little Fox air pump, pumped it up to 140 PSI, and then shot some WD-40 down into the area to make sure there wasn't any leaks around the stem. All looks good, and I'm well aware that you're supposed to put nitrogen in them, but I don't have any place close to get nitrogen. I have that. It's a stock shock. I'm not worried about it. I've used compressed air for years and never had any issues, so... I'm going to head back over to the other shop and put the spring back on. It's all back in one piece now. 
And the adjuster here works much better than it did before. Doesn't feel like it has rocks in it anymore. Just put a regular stem cap over that since the original seal was gone. That's why I thought maybe this thing had been apart. But the oil in it was nasty. Flushed it out with some transmission fluid and then filled it back up with the regular oil. So I want to put it back on, throw a little grease in those links on the bike, make sure the needle bearings are good, and I'm done for the day. So, till next time.